Uh, hello and welcome to the Elder Live podcast. This will be our first episode ever. Uh, we will be talking about the shaping of ourselves the, through media, social media, all the different ways that we have come into our own being. Um, and I think the first question that we were going to talk about today, um, and one that is very interesting to me personally, is how do you guys feel that you have been shaped by social media? Um, negatives and positives, how much of an influence has social media had on your lifetimes? Um, and I think if we wanted to start just to the right here with Jesse, uh, since it was your question initially, that would be great. All right. Um, so for me, it's been more of a positive influence. I try to steer away from like body image and like just that kind of crap that makes people feel bad about themselves just because I don't want to feel bad about myself. But uh, most of the stuff that I look at is mostly like drawings and just any form of art really. And it inspires me. Yeah, it just it inspires me to do that kind of stuff. And so for me, it's been a positive influence, but I can also see where it's been a negative influence in other people. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Um, well, definitely in like the form of like supermodels and like all that crap. Um, I say crap like it's bad, but it's not. It's not entirely it bad. It's yeah, just, it's not. It's just people can take it as bad. And, like, they're not taking it as bad. They're taking the way it makes them feel as bad. And so it just puts negative thoughts in people's heads. And it's not fun for anyone. It's definitely there. Like, the negative side is definitely there. It's just yeah, hard to I explain. Yeah, I see it all the time. And even in physical inactivity, and there's other negative side effects as well. Um, but absolutely, uh, the mental toll that it takes on people, especially if, like young people aren't supposed to be building a brand for themselves. <laughs> they're like five. <laughs> they're, not, they're supposed to be like staring at walls and coming into themselves and thinking and <laughs> like maybe watching some Looney Tunes on Sundays. You shouldn't be having to think about a whole brand and like how you're gonna um, display yourself to the world. It's kind of a crazy new era that we're living in. And yet that is literally the class that I am teaching you guys right now <laughs> is how to do that for yourselves. Um, Jeffrey, you are next up on my board here, if you wanted to talk a little bit about social media. Um, okay, I guess I'll just go to positive to negatives. I think the positive part about social media is, well, everyone can do it. Anyone can express their opinions, take pictures, and show it to the real world, and it's quite easy. Um, so I feel like it's kind of a little bit out of, on the negative side, it's a, it's controlled, you know, like. Sensor style or? Uh... I believe that, I, I, I don't know, but I think the, the negative is the fact that it's, it's supposed to be addicting. That's mm. the point. Like, it's built to make money, absolutely. Yeah, like um, Facebook and Instagram's a good one, and Snapchat, all of those. Yeah, they are all built with the specific task of keeping your eyes on their screen for as long as <laughs> humanly possible, and they're using your friends to like uh, attract you back with little pieces of funny information about their life, um, which isn't invariably a bad thing. But if you're prone to addiction or um, get a big rush from little dopamine hits that come through from like the likes or whatever, then it can absolutely have like crazy effects on people's mental health and well-being. Well, um, uh, this is kind of how this world has changed a little and got a little crazy is probably because technology is getting a little too advanced. Right. Oh, we're sort of over progressing at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta slow down a little bit, folks. Really interesting. Okay. Thanks, Jeffrey. Yeah. And if anyone wants to, to uh, chime in on anyone else's points, like just raise your hand and I'll, uh, I'll mitigate. <laughs> uh, Willow, have you got any thoughts? 
Um, I'm I'm not quite sure. I um I haven't been on social media for a while right now. Um, but I um I guess I most of what I look at is like ballet stuff because I do ballet, and I think that seeing other because there's like all kinds of pro- professional photography and art forms that are that just come from documenting ballet um so I think that kind of inspires me to like try different like techniques and um I guess I don't know it just kind of inspires me to do more practice more instead of like being like oh they're better than me or whatever so I like I don't think it's affected me negatively um it's like allowed me to connect with family which is nice um that I haven't seen in years so and it's kind of like wow you've changed a lot since I last saw you but I don't think it's a negative thing awesome great perspective Uh, Amelia um I think a lot of times mostly teens can be caught up with social media like a lot of times like this happens to me a lot of times but um say if like I want to take a quick look at social media a quick look quote unquote and all of a sudden it take and all of a sudden I realize that I'm on social media for around four hours and it can really take a lot of energy too surprisingly and I agree with uh, Jeffrey that technology is really starting to be advanced in a bu- in a bad way and a good way, mostly a bad way. Uh, Nathan. Um. So. Let me think about what to say real fast. Sorry. Um. Social. I've have way too much social media in my opinion. Um. And. I'd say that it has a mix of both negative and positive effects because for the positive part, um, I think someone said this, I don't remember who, but like I got to connect with people that I, one, haven't seen in a while and two, don't ever get to see because they live so, so far away. Um, So I get to connect with those type of people. And it makes me happy. Um, The negative effects is obviously seeing these hashtag perfect people online and just self-doubting myself thinking, is that like, is that what I could be or should I be or a bunch of negative thoughts. And in my opinion, I think the negative, um, (laughs) What I just said uh, about the negative, I think that overwhelms that positive. So I think that if if they're if you're getting those type of thoughts, then maybe just take a break for a while, go go outside, breathe some fresh air, not close to people, obviously, but <laughs> um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's. A hard, strange, weird addiction. (laughs) It takes a lot to upkeep, and it's uh, like a huge drain on your mental state for some people, and other people are able to just scroll on fine. Um, Sunny, what do you think? Positives are you get to see a bunch of cool people doing things they love and things that make them happy, but a negative is people hating on those people who do what they love to do and what makes them happy. Right. There's a lot of just negative uh, atmosphere out there. For some reason, a lot of some people tend to thrive on just giving negative feedback towards other people. Um, And so that can also be like a pretty painful aspect of hanging around on social media. Right. Uh, Awesome. Thanks, Annie. Uh, Charlie. Uh, I don't know. Social media is huge. Uh, like, we, 
like okay so anyone in the world can connect on social media and that is the coolest thing ever Incredible. you can talk to someone from africa in two seconds and they could become your best friend and that that just we we've connected everyone in the world and that's become good for some people but for other people they they choose it just to spread hatred and it's it's not very great and um we can change social media but we also decide not to because like the only way you're going to become famous on social media is if you look a certain way or if you're you're different and you're different enough from all the normal people that it stands out and you can become famous and it's it's always a what am i going to do next how am i going to get these followers who's going to do it for me and all kinds of other things and that's just it, it causes a lot of negative things in everyone else's life and it causes those people to feel negative and so they spread negativity to someone else and it's always it's always the same cycle yeah and anyone who has a higher count than you you're instantly like <laughs> you got to be a little jealous and like then you almost are less likely to like their thing or whatever or there's all sorts of weird mind games that are played just on your own <laughs> while you're sitting there scrolling along Incredible. yeah um ava says that um social media specifically discord is where she met uh some of her online friends and honestly i can sort of like uh i've i know a lot of people who are in a similar boat and I too have met a lot of people through like gaming and they can be really like supportive. It's crazy how um, you can just meet someone who can change your life just through something like that. But I also think that's sort of one of the dangers nowadays is like back in the day, for me at least, like going outside was kind of exciting because I felt like I might maybe meet someone cool and <laughs> like go have an adventure. But nowadays with the whole like pandemic, you sort of know what to expect <laughs> every time you go outside. It's like always sort of the same thing. Whereas on social media, there is sort of that chance where you'll be scrolling and you'll like see a post that could maybe like have a positive or or change on your life or whatever. Um, and usually that does not happen. And I think that's the danger is you just sit there scrolling like you would sit there wandering your town or whatever, looking for opportunities or looking for friends <laughs> or looking for uh, anything like that. And it uh, very seldom actually works out and you just end up wasting or spending hundreds of hours. That being said, I think there are a huge amount of like learning opportunities when it comes to just putting yourself out there on social media. And I don't think that like hard work is a bad thing by any means. Um, if you're able to put yourself out there and keep putting yourself out there, like you, the likelihood is you'll continue amass, to amass some sort of following. Um, and so, yeah, that can be, I mean, hugely beneficial for everyone. And I think knowing the game <laughs> like we're trying to uh get to the point of being able to do here um is really pretty much uh the most important thing you could do because then you know the negatives you know the positives and you know how to play it without hurting your own brain um let's finish ava's response <laughs> on social media you can meet really accepting people however you can also meet people who are the opposite and will actively make things worse for you spread misinformation spread hatred etc it's hard to say whether social media is a good thing or a bad thing. Neither the positive nor the negatives outweigh each other. And I think that's a really <laughs> pretty good summation, actually, of all of our points here. Um, great job, everyone. Really interesting. Uh, do we want to go through one more time? And uh, does anyone have any final comments or questions that we could uh, address? Willow. Um, I think a big piece of like when you can connect with people across the world on social media, um, and it's kind of like some of it seems like it's breaking down like cultural barriers. Like you can mm -hmm. connect with these people and then you can influence them and they can influence you. And so maybe it's helping humanity just become one big pot of humans. <laughs> Border destruction yeah absolutely any other thoughts <laughs> oh 
All right, rad. Should we ask another question, or do you think that was enough uh, content for a uh, podcast? We're about 20 minutes in so far. I think we can maybe ask another question. I don't know what the question could be, but because <laughs> like with editing this, with editing our first initial 20 minutes, it might go down to maybe like 10, 15. Like, yeah, eight maybe. <laughs> yeah. Nathan, I personally would like to talk about the, um, how art has affected. Someone. Oh yeah. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Do you want to ask it? Yeah. So um how has art affected you it doesn't just mean um visual art um it could mean um music or i don't know any other examples my mind's blanking uh, <laughs> yeah don't worry willow we'll all come to the conclusion whether or not we should share it at the end of the once the product is complete <laughs> um okay so basically um, Nathan is asking uh, about formative pieces of media throughout your lifetime, and uh, be it animations or movies or television or music or um, whatever. Anime was on TV that week, or Avatar The Last Airbender is my first one. <laughs> um, and let's start with Charlie this time and work backwards. Um... Uh, so a very positive influence of mine that I've had that's been on social media um, is probably the same as Amelia's, but it's Youngblood. He is <clears throat> the best person in the world, um, <laughs> and he, he cares about his whole fan base, and that's, like, great. But his whole, like, subject of making music is for you to be yourself, and no matter who you are and no matter how you view yourself... Uh, I don't know how no matter how other people's people view you, you're still loved and you are still you and no one can change that. And that's so positive. And it's in a uh, in a way that because he gets all kinds of people that everyone think are weird and negative and um and they they just they just be themselves and they they tell other people to be themselves at that point and it continues to spread and I don't know. It's just there's so much love in a one community. That's another amazing thing that the internet has offered up is uh, spaces for all those communities. Like there is a community for every person on the planet, basically. <laughs> but you have to be able to find it. Um, but it's it's probably out there on the internet, floating around. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on to Sunny. Any television, um, media, music, whatever that was formative to you in your uh, whole life? Uh, I, I don't know. I always grew up like watching YouTube on my mom's phone before I always had a phone. So maybe that. Cool. Nathan? Um, so, um, it's affected me a lot, and the reason why I asked this question is because, um, music, it's when I'm feeling really sad or depressed or feel like I'm not worth it, I'll put on some music and all of those feelings will drain away. Whoops. Um... <laughs> Um, and it's, it's the same for any other art. Cause, um, I also paint. And so when I'm, um, uh, relaxing, listening to music and painting, staying away from all the drama and the crisis that's outside my door, um, I just calm down and paint something and it doesn't have to look good as long as I get that little hint of dopamine. Nice. For me, I feel like having one headphone in was always sort of a way to feel like I was doing something for myself, even if I was doing a bunch of other stuff for a bunch of other people. Like, 
it just made every experience still feel sort of like I was I was there for my own reasons and I was having fun doing it. <laughs> um, that was sort of a thing for me um, when it comes to music and I've just always had headphones in <laughs> my most of my life. <laughs> um, Ava. Oh, I guess, are you still micless? Um, Ava says, personally, a positive influence for me was Thomas Sanders. He is a YouTuber who is part of the LGBTQ community. Specifically, he is gay. He is so positive all the time and encourages self-love to those parts of the spectrum, no matter what gender, sexuality, race, etc. He also made a scripted series on his channel called Sanders Sides. Um, it's about facets of his personality, solving mental issues that all people may come across, and teaches you how to deal with them in a mature way. That's the other thing to consider about social media is, I mean, once you have that outreach, you can make really positive influence and change on huge numbers of people as uh, Thomas Sanders has, for instance. <laughs> um, awesome, thank you, Ava. Uh, Amelia? What's the topic again? I'm sorry. No problem. Um, formative for, uh, media throughout your lifetime, um, be it music or television or like a show you watched or uh, anything along those lines. Does that make sense? Um, I say through over the time. Uh, I'm just going to give an example. Um, a lot of times, like, I'm not good with babysitting and stuff. And I say technology is, like, the like is the most help with that because, I guess, because, again, babysitting, not my <laughs> level of stuff. And I'm always going to, like, mess up or the kid's going to do something that I don't even know. And so technology helps with that. So that way I can just stick them in front of the TV or the computer and it would be fine and I wouldn't be freaking out 24 7 <laughs> and especially with me like I also agree with Nathan like um with music like it really helps me calm down and especially with like uh especially with dealing with emotions too like music helps a lot with that awesome Uh, Jeffrey. Okay, I might need help with this because I'm very confused. Am I supposed to pick something out of my life that's been helping me or what? Yeah, basically anything that had an influence on you throughout your lifetime that was just a form of media that someone else created. Media. Hmm. Like, what for you? Or can it just be an object or something else? Because really, the, I, I don't know if you noticed, but my profile picture is a, a piece of technology. Uh -huh. And yeah. um, it was technology that kind of gave me an influence, hmm. sort of. Uh, also, the internet, it's it's awesome, too. It's, uh, it's kind of why I've done so many cool things like internship with technology, with Nick Prince, and, you know, it's fun. Yeah, absolutely. I interned with Nick Prince. Uh, the first ever intern with Nick Prince was me. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> oh, it's cool. Um, Jesse, what about you? Um, so there's been a lot of influences in my life, but one of the big ones was definitely, like, cartoons or anime like and I say those and those are two separate things like anime is like a whole culture like anime and manga and then cartoons the, it's also there's its own separate culture but two very different things um, but cartoons when I was little used to just give me an escape when I got angry or something like that um, and I would just sit in front of the TV, turn on some flipping SpongeBob, and all is good in the world. 
and then as I got older, I started getting into more mature shows. And so like cartoons, like they're still in a very deep space in my heart. But anime is definitely up there. And one of my favorite animes is probably Avatar The Last Bender. I love it so freaking much. I just finished and, it last night, actually. Oh, oh dude, it's awesome. I've, I'm watching it for the second time. Well, technically the third, but it doesn't really... It, second and a half, we'll call it that. But, um, yeah. And so, just visual art has helped me a lot, and so has music. Um, like, yeah. me and Nathan were in a band, and uh, music has just helped so much throughout my entire life. Like, I've I've always had an earbud in, always. And so, except for as of lately, because um, I've been grounded, but that will be lifted soon. And then we'll go back to wearing the earbud 24-7. Um, but it's always provided an escape from just everything. And, like, photography, also another thing that I do. Um, I haven't been doing it a whole lot for the past, like, maybe half a year. But before that, I definitely did it quite a bit. And, like, I'd go around and I'd take pictures of rocks, like, just random rocks that have no significance on this planet. But they're just there, and it's like, oh, I could take a cool picture with this. And it just it gives a distraction. And I, I've said that a lot, but... I guess I'm trying to say it to really emphasize the fact that you can find literally anything on this planet and it'll provide a distraction. But yeah. Awesome. That was a great contribution. Thanks, Jesse. What about with like you? For me? <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I have been um, enjoying <laughs> different things for so long. I mean, books are another one. For me, I think when I was really young, reading was my fix. And then I started to move away from that and I got onto audiobooks and I would literally have like, I wouldn't be able to communicate with people. I would take like four hours to do anything because I just have a book running in my head all the time. Um, and that was, I think, quite formative for me as a young lad. Um, and then Ooh, I remember I was in Mexico and I saw Dragon Ball Z for the first time on a uh, Mexican television. It was in Spanish, so I didn't really know what was going on, but it was just like real <laughs> and like people were getting ripped apart and stuff. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And then um, my I went over to pick up my sister from her friend's house and her dad happened to have the disc set of all of Dragon Ball Z. And, and I was like, can I borrow that, please? <laughs> and so I got into Dragon Ball Z really early on. And I don't think my parents really knew what I was watching necessarily. And then I also have this odd recollection of, um, you were talking about Avatar The Last Airbender. Me and my friend used to, we didn't actually have like standard television, um, but we her mom was watching a household of someone who did have standard television, but it was a mile and a half like through the woods <laughs> from our house. So we'd like have to, like Avatar would be coming on at 11 and so we'd just start trekking at like 9 and we'd like arrive for the ep episodes of Avatar. It was awesome. Um, it's pretty amazing how formative those kind of things can be. My girlfriend has a Water Tribe tattoo um, just for that same reason of like Avatar The Last Airbender somehow just was somehow the thing that shaped her as a person. <laughs> like it's crazy uh, the influence that those sorts of things can have. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I could keep going for a while. I've got a lot. Uh, <laughs> One Piece. I feel like I've been watching One Piece like for a really long time, and it has always just sort of been there um, in my life. Didn't it start in like the '90s and it's still going? Yeah. <laughs> Chapter yeah. One Thousand now, boys. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. One uh, Piece has gotten like the show itself has gotten so intense. That like I don't even know what's going on anymore. <laughs> Maybe we should have a One Piece podcast. Have you guys ever seen that? There is the One Piece podcast on Spotify. It has like thousands of episodes, and they're all hours long. It's incredible. <laughs> well, like one episode you could talk about for like two days about every subject in that episode. <laughs> I know it's pretty. And they're like twenty minutes long, aren't they? 
The episodes, though, yeah, they are 20 minutes. Dude, we could but totally that, start an anime podcast. Like, that'd be the <laughs> sickest thing on the planet. It'd be pretty funny. Um, all right. Well, I think this was a great first attempt at a podcast, everyone. I think we did a good job, <laughs> at the very least. Um, and it will be fun to edit together and see where it all plays out. What do you think? We still have time. We could either uh, ask another question and go around one more time, or we could throw this audio track, see if we could throw it into a editing software and start messing around with it. Um, I throw it through the software. Oh, yeah, we still need Wi- Willow. Oh, Willow. I'm sorry. Sorry. Luckily, we can edit, so uh, <laughs> we'll squeeze again. Sorry. I know. Yeah. Okay. Um... What was the question again? Um, formative media, basically. Anything that uh, helps form you as a person, be it... Uh, I mean, also, no one talked about video games. Uh, <laughs> video games, movies, uh, music, um, audiobooks, reading, uh, art that you've seen. Uh, anything that you feel like has had a big effect on you throughout your lifetime. Um. Okay, well, I don't know. I think... Um, not really music. I haven't really, like, always listened to music. I mean, I've listened to the radio and that, but, um, I'm not sure. Um, I guess, um, one, Impractical Jokers, um, that's a show. I don't know if you watched it, but (laughs) if you have, you know it, you know why. Um, it's basically just, it's really funny and there's not a lot of, like, I've, really basically never laughed out loud at a tv show but that's that's one that i have um and i guess it's just kind of funny to see i'm not sure why but it's just a funny show um i guess formative probably books just books period thanks yeah books (laughs) pretty good stuff folks all right should i uh end the recording now uh go ahead at least from my end go ahead (laughs) okay i think i'm doing it uh thanks for tuning in (laughs) stop recording